Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11 and in this video I will begin by placing a commsat into a specified orbit by this contract. That's a fairly high orbit, it is not uh, keosynchronous, it is way beyond that. It needs a thermometer and I want this satellite to be able to communicate with interplanetary missions so we're going to put our best dish, best relay dish on it. Uh, specifically we want to be able to communicate to a mission at EVE however our best dish can't really do that on its own if you can see the we have the level 2 DSN right now and so that's 10 gigameters but as it so happens at the that's fine if EVE and Kerbin are really close together or just not too far apart but if they're on opposite sides of the Sun from each other uh, we really need the level 3 DSN this 22.4 happens to be just about exactly the distance between Kerbin and Eve at their greatest extent. So to use this antenna to communicate with Eve, ideally uh, to guarantee communication with Eve, we need the level 3 DSN. However, the antenna is combinable, so I think we'll be okay if we use two. So I'm going to purchase that, but of course we can't make it the first part. I believe we're going to just use the reusable launcher that we did uh, last time. That makes sense. Uh, somebody in the comments noted that, well, the thing about reusable launchers is you take a lot of time to bring them back and waste time because we are we need to do other stuff, right? It's taking time out of other missions, and that's true. Uh, and so we're probably not going to use the reusable launchers that much if it turns out that the economics isn't worthwhile but for now we are pretty tight on our budget and we still have buildings to unlock like level three on the tracking station and stuff like that that i'm saving up for so i think it'd be best to try and recover as much as possible until at least we get all the buildings unlocked so yeah uh probodobodine hex i'm going to unlock here we also have a lot of parts to unlock and so we can uh, start using the hex now there you are and we'll build the satellite around that the dishes are gonna poke out a bit so we might have the first use of a fairing <laughs> finally we actually have a 1.875 meter fairing so maybe we'll rebuild the top of this to accommodate larger payloads I mean physically larger rather than uh, heavier I would like the hex this time on yeah, let's just redo this bit and use the hex instead since it can hold retrograde. Oh, we can put these parachutes directly on here. That might be more convenient. I don't think anybody suggested a name for the launcher, though. That's looking good. Who needs those service bays anyway? I don't know. Uh, so we're missing uh, this amount of fuel, though. We probably had a little bit too much last time anyway. But I don't like having less fuel, <laughs> so maybe we should go with this one. Sea level thrust weight ratio seems fine. Delta V. Well, we're carrying a fairly light payload with this uh, with this satellite anyway, so it's not good to judge uh, that right now. And we can carry more batteries now. And we needed a thermometer. <laughs> Almost forgot. We needed a thermometer. Actually, 1,095 meters per second might not be enough, come to think of it. We might want a little bit more delta V than that to get to that high orbit and circular. Uh, it's basically circularizing at that high orbit, so yeah, I would feel a little bit better with more fuel. And perhaps two little thrusters to cut down on the burn time. When we get down to grabbing space junk, or uh, perhaps repurposing space junk, somebody mentioned repurposing the pods that we have left up there into satellites. Um, that is when the little RCS thrusters are really going to come into play because uh, they can help us maneuver closer to that space junk. We'll have little tugs grabbing the space junk. and these thruster blocks are heavier oh that's the that's still a lighter one uh, these thruster blocks are heavier the lighter ones will help the tugs be much more efficient when uh, grabbing onto 
the space junk and pulling it into the cargo bay of a shuttle, for instance. So this is just a comm set. It's comm set five. Because we've got four, one, two, and three failed. So yeah, just checking all the details. Inclination is easy as antenna can generate power. Okay, then combinable. Hopefully everything is good. So let's try. Uh, I feel like I should put something in this gap here, but I'm sure eventually we'll find out. <laughs> uh, for now, we don't have action groups either, so I can't. I mean, we have these. I guess, yeah, we have the axis action groups. We don't have the regular, regular action groups, so I'm not going to set the parachutes to anything just yet. Okay. Let's go. Okay, throttle up, SAS on, and launch. It's feisty. Honestly, I don't know if the fairing helped. It's really wobbly already. <laughs> uh, that's not great. I wonder how well it can hold prograde right here. I'm just gonna let hold prograde. <laughs> I think it's too uh, too shallow. Okay, back to prograde. Okay, off prograde again. We need to get back to a zero inclination here. We could throttle down. One thing I want to do with this is try again to come closer to the KSC with it. Uh, reusable launcher. We were obviously a bit too long last time. So we'll need a periapsis that's lower than 30 kilometers this time. We'll have plenty of spare fuel, which might be a bad thing. Oh, which might be a bad thing. So we'll have to see. I think we can jettison the fairing. Not the best way to jettison the fairing, but We'll have to go with the clamshell fairings in the future. These are automatically active. So that's good. And uh, we have a satellite overhead, so that's good too. Uh, it's a little bit high, but okay, I'll take it. Alright, let's see if there's anything wrong with the satellite. It seems functional so far. Down here with the launcher, I'm gonna start doing a few things, arming the parachutes. Oh, we've got too much fuel. I should put that fuel dumping device on. Okay, well, first things first, let's try and work with this. So, the target orbit is that one. Let me verify that I'm not incorrect about that. We have a thermometer, it says. Yep, that looks like... That looks like the one. So we... It's just more convenient for us to boost to uh, that apoapsis first, even though I think we should probably go for the periapsis first, but it'll be quicker to go for the apoapsis first. So, And we'll have this satellite helping us here. And burn. And check that we're not bumping into our stage. Oh, the thrusters are a little bit askew. I didn't notice that. I think we're a little bit late. I should have done this earlier. Okay, but... Uh, ooh, a little bit of inclination too. We can work with it though, I think. I'm sure we can work with it. So... I don't know. The margins that they have... They're pretty tolerant about where we place these things. I think they'll be happy with that. We'll see. Okay, so that's this little guy. And let me just make sure it's charging, though it's not going to pay attention to the electric charge consumption when we're not paying attention to the satellite, but it is recharging. And back to the stage. Gosh, with all the clouds and haziness from Scatter, I can't really see the landforms as well, but I 
think we're roughly where I want to deorbit anyway. So we are going to try for 26 kilometers. And see how that works. We're a little bit higher this time. And the higher you are, the lower you have to set the periapsis for recovery if you want to get to the KSC. We're also heavier, so we'll have less drag or less deceleration due to drag. Let me put it that way. Okay, we have encountered the atmosphere. Okay, I think we're a little bit early. We'll see. We're over here. KSC's over there. And we are at 50 kilometers already. Early is generally not good because of the mountains. Well, there's a thing there. We might get to it. Oh, that's that's not the KSC. KSC's a little bit beyond right there. We'll see. I can't really tell whether it is mountainy or not right now. I can see the KSC over there, though. Oh, there's the parachutes. I mean, this looks flat enough. I didn't really see... Uh, there's, there's definitely cliffs right there. It's really hard to see in the dark. But I don't know how bumpy the terrain is here. Certainly closer. Not exactly right. Lots of terrain scatter. Ooh. There's a rock field or something? What's going on? Is all of those trees? Those are all trees. Like a forest. Not quite, but... 8 meters per second, so yeah. We need a few more parachutes. And we're still in communication right now at 100 meters. Um, straight from the... K okay, now we're on ComSat 5. Actually, the ComSat we just deployed is helping us. That's nice. Uh, it held. It held. It's legit. Recover vessel. Well, that's an improvement. We got 96.4% of the value. Okay, let's get on with placing that commsat. For interplanetary missions, the higher up it is, the better it is. It's not really... Ne Since we have all these comm stations around Kerbin now, uh, there's no particular reason to keep it above the KSC, especially. And the higher it is, the less time it's going to be shadowed by... in the shadow of Kerbin, given wherever the heck we are trying to transmit from. So, yeah, th I'll keep it in this higher orbit. I wouldn't bring it back down to Keosynchronous orbit or anything like that, though we have some fuel. Oral period, it's basically two days. It's a little bit more than two days. So... Just off the top of my head, I haven't looked it up or anything. If I recall correctly, the EVE window is when EVE is 54 degrees behind Kerbin. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Again, the Duna window happens first. And, of course, there's a lot of Moho windows. We don't even care. <laughs> uh, no, I want to go back. Oh, no. Okay, yeah. Uh, right by, uh, we just passed the Duna window right there. It's 45 degrees. Then Jewel, we also passed, it was uh, 90 degrees to Jewel. 90 degrees with Jewel ahead by 90 degrees. I think Drez is like 80 something, 82. And then Elu will be 100 something degrees ahead. Okay, we'll try that. So, taking a look at what we're actually supposed to be doing. Fly by EVE. Well, definitely. Position a satellite in synchronous orbit of EVE. Which it defines like that, which doesn't look synchronous to me at all, but... Thermometer. We need a thermometer. And then there's a tundra orbit. So what I'd like to do is have this, a single satellite handle this and this. Mystery Goose Science Junior Thermometer and lots of delta v. I'm going to base it off of uh, the commsat that we had, but we're, we're not going to need two dishes or anything. Uh, we don't need a relay. We just need this direct one 
which will be able to communicate well yeah uh, having this direct one which will connect to this relay the relay that we've set should be good enough we'll only have the dish on one side and we'll counterbalance it with whatever else we need on the other side a goo will do fine yeah a goo is the same mass and we need we are going to need a science oops science junior so it could be like that we might as well put a barometer so we'll have the thermometer on one side barometer on the other side but I actually want more Delta V if we really want to go all out we can have a whole raft of these things and then we can put the spark in the middle that's a lot of Delta V that'll get us there I think I don't know if it'll get us into both orbits I think it will but I feel like we don't have enough power to transmit the science that we intend to transmit, so... Um, you know, this is not a very efficient battery in terms of cost. It has double the charge of these, but it's more than four times the cost, so forget that. <laughs> I don't like that. I should not use that again. Now this starts out retracted, which could cause us problems. Oh, and we, we didn't even have the surface mount antenna that I had placed before on the launcher because that had been placed on the top stage. And we still maintain communication. That was nice. But we might as well have one just in case. If, if I forget to deploy this dish. But I think it's worthwhile to make absolutely sure about that. Okay, maybe that's good enough, maybe not. I forget exactly how much it's going to take to go from one orbit to another. I think we should go into this orbit first, if we can. It's got a lot of requirements, but it's got the low periapsis, and that'll help us on our capture. If we can hit that periapsis location, right? Uh, if it doesn't look like after our transfer we can hit that periapsis location properly, then we'll get into this one first. And then from the high orbit, bring ourselves back down again. Uh, yeah, either way we're going to have a huge inclination change to do. Hmm. But from higher up that's easier. 2700, is it enough? I don't know. We, we will see. We will also send a... I mean, they haven't paid us for a crewed mission. Let me see if there's a contract for sending crew, but I doubt it. We might just wait for the next window for that. I know we can do it. I know we can do it. But uh, as we saw from them not giving us, like, plan a flag on Minmus or anything like that, they still don't tell us to plan a flag on Minmus. I'm worried that they're just never going to give us... Ooh, the cheetah on an escape trajectory out of the, well, out of the moon, though. Uh, that they're never going to give us the correct contracts. So I'll I'll hold off on sending a Kerbal unless they give us a Kerbal contract. Let's just get this one done then. I mean, it's got 4,000 on the ground. Oh, God. Um, no! No! Why? I don't think it's a reusable launcher anymore. <laughs> That's sad. It looks like we need launch clamps finally. I've come to I, I've come to this realization that we might need launch clamps. We could have used the landing struts too. They seem pretty good, but I don't think there's any downside to using the launch clamps. I mean, there is the one antenna that's off to one side. We do have an imbalance there. That's the only thing. Okay, throttle up. SAS is on. Get the orbit information and launch. By the way, the gravity turn technically is setting the initial angle correctly and then having the rocket go prograde the whole way. Otherwise, it's a pitch program. So, that's the distinction. If I were to have an initial sort of pitch over and then just click the prograde button, that would be a gravity turn. But that takes some calculation. <laughs> So yes, uh, I could send a whole bunch of stuff right now and milk all the science from Evangelii, but 
I'm not going to. I, I'll stick to what the contracts tell me to do, for the most part. Somebody asked whether I would ever do a speedrun, and I'm going like, no. <laughs> uh, the journey is, is part of the fun. I, I, I don't think there's any good reason to do a speedrun, actually. People have completed the tech tree in a trivial number of missions, I know, so... I don't think there's any thing good. I mean, you don't have to be especially inventive to do that. There's a limited number of ways to do it properly. Whereas there's a whole lot of ways to be inventive if you just take your time. So, bearings. Well, I forgot the, to extend that antenna. Talking away. Is this us or is that us? No, this is us. We're in trouble. On the bright side, this rocket can land. <laughs> On the downside, I don't know if we're going to get in the comms in time for it to do that. It's getting hot. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, this might not be the best orientation. See, I shouldn't talk while, while launching. The baguettes are still pretty solid here. Well, this is now an expensive dart into the ocean. This time, we'll wait for our commsats. Uh, both of them. We want both of them. Uh, is that gonna be good enough right there? Anyway, I'll remember to extend the antenna, I swear. Okay, here we go again. Throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. I don't know what altitude the com, uh, the com dishes would rip apart, the ones that deploy. I should check that out. Okay, fairings. And this time, comment in a... Though with the ones... Oh, come on. Though with the ones that are overhead, this surface mount one should do fine. Alright, that's about right. And separate the mission. Separate the mission. We actually have more Delta V than I thought we did. Somehow I got more out of it. Okay, this seems to be in good order. So, plotting for Eve. Uh, we might have been able to go direct, almost. There is Eve's inclination to deal with. We'll just do a mid-course adjustment for that. It's not that much. Oop, there we go. Eve periapsis. So, the, this, there's this orbit, and then there's that orbit. <laughs> uh, we could do either one first. So I'm just going to see, let me add a maneuver here, capture, and then sort of radial it, capture more. Really trying to get closer to that orbit. How much is that? That's a lot. <laughs> we have, we probably have it. Anyway, we'll do the first burn first and then we'll see what we need to do. Uh, it might still be nicer to get into, not, not Achilles orbit, that green orbit right there. Let's get the launcher back down since this is going to take some time. Uh, we might end up sending the mission on a subsequent orbit instead of the first orbit, we'll see. And we'll go for 27-ish I mean, it was pretty nice landing on land though, and if we overshoot, we're going to end up in the water. If I'm doing the retro burns at just a subtly different location, it's already going to cause differences. It would be nice if we had the local coordinates. That's one thing that a different display like MechJev would give, or maybe Kerbal Engineer would give, the actual coordinate that we're at. 
then we could do the retro burns precisely and that would make it easier to get it we could get it back to the runway would be most convenient actually this is a nice long stretch trying to get it back onto the pad is is spacex nonsense <laughs> so okay all right i physical time warp through the whole thing <laughs> it's something i would not do in realism overhaul i'll tell you and we've got parachute deployment here um we started off with a lower apoapsis so we had to go higher anyway and it seems like we've ended up basically in the same place <laughs> we've ended up in basically the same place i didn't actually shift the fuel down though since I have communication right now, I'm going to just uh, give us a little bit more of a firm stance when we try to balance on the slope here, which isn't great. But yeah, the lower the apoapsis or the orbit that you're at, the higher the periapsis that you aim for for a retro burn. The 8 meter per second worked for us last time, so I didn't add any parachutes, but maybe we should not be so sanguine about that. Okay, but it's still stuck to landing. And recover. Okay, prograde. And comms, let's check comms. Oh, no, we do not have comms right now. Whoops. Well, one more orbit, I suppose. Oh, no, we've got comms now. Uh, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> we we're very close to the KSC, so I thought it'd be all right, but... Okay, let's see what's going on. Oh, it started to go up. All right, let's get rid of this node and readjust the mid-course adjustment. So let me just see how much it would take to get into the high orbit here. We're not going to get as much Oberth effect out of it. So that's not good. So that 800 it'll cost. So that'll leave us with 1,100 to get into that orbit. Um, except that's coming around the other way. We'd actually have to get up there. Yeah, no, that's not going to work very well. Okay. Yeah, it's going the opposite direction. So, better to just be standoffish. Maybe we should just capture low, aim for that periapsis there, and then work it out. We'll have to lift our orbit again, but let's see how that balances out. I think that's okay around EVE. Okay, so that capture burn is 300, and then over here, roughly, is going to have to change a bit. Let's say we do that, that's 500, it's about the same. Uh, yeah, so 300 here, 578 there, that's 875, right? Uh, sorry, 878, or a little bit more than that. Um... So that's 878 to lift us to the correct orbit. And then if we don't try and oberth it, so that's roughly the right orbit right there. We'll have to do a bit of an inclination thing like that. And that is less. So it's actually less to do it like this than to capture low at eve, use oberth effect, and all that business. So we'll do this. Okay. Make sure we are recharging. All right, let's see how the comms are going to be. That's another thing. Um, yep, that's another thing. I might need two of these antennas for it, actually, come to think of it. Yeah. I don't think I thought about that quite right. Oh, dear. Okay, we are in interplanetary space for the first time. I feel like there's science to be done here. Not the goo and the science junior though. But let's transmit. We will get something done. 
I guess it technically didn't say an unused mystery goo or science junior. It just says carry a science junior or mystery goo. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, no. No. Wait, it's recharging. Is it recharging? Um, but we have no comms. Okay. Well, this is complicated. Uh, we've lost comms. Uh, but is it because we don't have enough charge or because we don't have enough connection? Well, let's see. It, 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 oh, wait, we've got connection. Okay, hold on. I think we're uh, the other panel is working now. Sort of. Oh, no, other way. Okay, SAS back on, please. We'll have to be more careful about that. Hibernate in warp auto. Signal strength is 88% though, that's not bad. I think it'll be doable. Eve is not going to be on the opposite side of the sun from Kerbin though, so we're in a good shape. Okay, and burn. Okay, 0, 0.0. Oh, we're really losing, well, 40% now, it's getting, getting bad. We might have to do things pretty quickly. 17. Okay, we are in EVE SOI with 16% now. And we might as well get some science done. We've got charge. Log temperature. Transmit. Log pressure, transmit. So we've done those things. Now we need about 18 hours to get to periapsis without losing communication. So let's see. Okay. So node. And 812.2 meters per second. And we'll at least have one contract done. And go. We got the Flyby Eve contract as well, of course. And we did gather scientific data. And this is the one that we're trying to take care of right now. Got to remember to maintain stability part. 12% signal strength. Okay, we just need to maintain stability here. Alright, so that contract is done. But now, now we have to do something like that. So what we're going to do is right here, with the ascending and descending node there, you see, we're going to have a maneuver here. And we actually have to flip around, right? Because we're going like this. And that means, yeah, it has to go... Let's go like that. That. That's what I want. And we don't have the delta V for that sort of thing. Uh, yeah, we can't... Going lower first won't help with the inclination bit. So I think, yep, I underestimate how much we would need to get into that weird orbit. We'll have to send something else. We could get to Gilly pretty easily, though. There's other signs. Let's... Should we do the Mystery Goo here, or... I think we'll just do the Mystery Goo here first. And transmit. Um, we should be able to transmit that without recharging. We are oriented badly. We'll see about this. We could go to Gilly, but I think I'll wrap it up for this video. And we'll I'll think about what to do with this next time. Maybe I'll come up with some weird orbital thing that could allow us to go from this orbit to that orbit with the delta V that we've got, but I don't think so. So anyway, for now, with our first there's Eve, I didn't even show it properly before. For with our first entry into 
another Planet's SOI, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.